Our Chief Guest, Honorable Minister Sri K. T. Rama Rao, our Guest of Honor, Dr. Krishna Ella, dignitaries on the dais, the governing body, distinguished faculty, and proud parents, and of course, above all, the graduating class. How are you feeling today? Let's hear it a little louder. I like that decibel level a lot more, much nicer. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Mahindra group, we have made a religion out of education. For over 75 years, we have run schools, given scholarships, supported educational institutions, funded academic chairs, and created educational opportunities for girls and disadvantaged, disadvantaged youngsters. However, out of all these initiatives, the Mahindra University is by far the most ambitious. So while this is my first visit to the campus, I assure you it will not be my last. I feel privileged to be associated with this institution because, frankly, I envisage it to be the future of education. So what's that future going to look like? What is the future of education? How will it affect higher education as we know it today? And I've, I've spent some time trying to grapple with that question. What I see is a quiet, but really a tectonic shift taking place in the sphere of education. And this shift, I think, is encapsulated in a story I want to share with you about the legendary executive, automobile executive Bob Lutz, who was hired by General Motors to turn the crisis around in that, that crisis-ridden automobile company. Now, it's difficult to find someone in the car business who was more hard-headed and profit-minded. And yet, when the New York Times asked him how his approach would be different from his predecessors, what did he say? He said, my approach is more right-brained. I see us as being in the business of art, art, entertainment, and mobile sculpture, sculpture which just coincidentally happens to provide transportation. So what does that imply? It implies that the, the, the Lakshman Rekha, so to speak, between art and science, between the left and the right brain, between logic and intuition all become blurred. I see it in our own automotive business at Mahindra. With increasing prosperity, there's a rise in customer aspirations and expectations. And customers are no longer just happy buying a box and wheels that takes them from point A to point B. They demand beauty, convenience, technological superiority, and entertainment, all, of course, at a reasonable price. And unless our engineers know how to use both sides of their brain, they're not going to be able to provide all those expectations. And frankly, I believe this is going to apply to all disciplines, not just to engineering. Because as, as automation increasingly takes over, computers will draft contracts, they'll file tax returns, they'll diagnose and treat everyday diseases. Now, engineers, doctors, lawyers, accountants, MBAs, they're not going to disappear. But AI will take over most of their routine work. So in addition to their professional skills, your worth is going to be judged against capabilities that cannot be outsourced to a computer. And ironic I say that here when Tech Mahindra is the founding donor of this institution, and yet I say that with confidence. Because capabilities that are uniquely human, like critical thinking, storytelling, the knowledge of art, design, literature, 
all of which contribute to communication, understanding and empathy. Capabilities that focus on understanding the world around us and understanding the desires of the human heart. The Bob Lutz story that I shared with you clearly points to the need for more people who use the left as well as the right side of their brain. More whole brain thinkers, as it were. And it points to the need, therefore, for academic institutions that can produce whole brain thinkers. So the education that we provide here must rise to that challenge. And we are a young university, not yet set in our ways. And frankly, that gives us a unique opportunity to be path breakers, to change the whole arts versus science paradigm that has shaped education, particularly in the 20th and 21st centuries. Now, the Vice Chancellor told us that we will soon start a school of media and liberal arts next year. But we need to build a school of liberal arts with a difference. I've served on some boards of some fine education institutions overseas. But I have to say, even in those institutions, humanities is nothing but just one more separated silo. It's not an integrated part of every course or school. And can we be different? Can we integrate both the sciences and the humanities into all our disciplines so that we as a university are known not just for producing thinkers, movers and shakers and successful professionals, but also well-rounded, good human beings. Good human beings who use their whole brain and have what it takes to succeed in any field of endeavor. So my dream, speaking of dreams, would be to take the Ganga of sciences and the Jamuna of the arts and merge them seamlessly into a confluence, into a prayag, as it were. Alp, sorry. Albert Einstein said, education is what is left after you have forgotten everything that you learnt in school. It is my fondest hope, ladies and gentlemen, that what our alumni retain with them when all else is forgotten is the experience of that prayag and that they will cherish it as a deep and lasting contribution to their lives. Thank you, gentlemen.